Every week, someone asks me, Ray, what tools are you actually using to ship? Not the ones I'm testing on streams, but the ones I'm using every single day in my own apps. So here's my 2026 Vibe Code Stack. These are the exact five tools that I'm paying for right now. Why I choose each one and what the whole thing costs. Factory AI is for building. Cursor AI is my IDE and Bugbot is for quality. Ursel is actually used for deployment and a couple MCPs for documentation. That's it. That's the stack. Now let me show you why each one matters and honestly who this is not for because this isn't a cheap stack, but for the right person, it pays for itself in just the first week. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before I break down each tool, let me tell you what problem I was trying to solve. I've been testing AI agents live on streams for about a year now. Claude Code, Cursor, Windsurf, Droid, Codex, all of them. And here's what I kept running into. Three things that actually kill your momentum when you're shipping with AI. One is context death. So you're deep in a refactor and the agent keeps forgetting the architecture decision you made just about an hour ago. Heck, sometimes even three messages ago. And then suddenly it's suggesting code that just breaks what you just built. That's so annoying. Number two is quality slip. So you're moving fast and the AI is generating tons of code and the bugs are actually starting to sneak through because no one's actually checking the work. And number three is deploy friction. So you need to actually test something and you need to share a preview, but your infrastructure is just fighting you instead of actually helping you. If you solve those three problems, context, quality, and deploy, everything else actually gets easier. That's what this stack does. Each tool handles one of those problems. So let me show you how. So the first tool is Factory AI. And this one actually surprised me the most. So I just migrated my entire Ray Transcribed app to Vercel Blob Storage. And this new transcription pipeline has a new upload flow and the whole architecture actually changed. 35 commits over 11 days. And here's what actually gets interesting here. It started here with about a 998 line migration plan. And before I wrote a single line of code, Droid actually helped me think through the entire approach from reactive pattern changes to the blob storage architecture. And the actually whole thing was documented. With most agents, I'd be re-explaining this plan every 30 minutes. But with Droid, one session, context compression means that it actually remembers what it was doing three hours ago and what we decided on this pattern for blob storage. So when I'm actually building the blob storage utilities, it actually knows the plan. And then when I'm refactoring the transcription hooks, it remembers the schema changes we made yesterday. And then look at this commit right here. I deleted 1,767 lines of legacy code in one commit. The old API route is now gone. The retry strategy service is also gone. The progress calculator, that's also gone. The entire transcription service class is also deleted. And you know why I had the confidence to do that? Is because the agent remembered the entire architecture. This is crazy. I know. It knew that the new convex mutations were actually handling everything that the old services used to do. And it actually knew what was safe to remove. Crazy, right? And then after the migration was done, I added a completely new feature on top, a reprocess model with the language model selection. That's another 1,101 lines, 10 files, and new UI components, as well as new convex actions. And it handled the whole thing. That's because the agent still understood the architecture that we've been building for the past week. That's not autocomplete. That's an agent that actually gets what you're building. Crazy. Factory AI costs $200 for 200 million tokens. Then you pay per use after that. Is it expensive compared to free tools? Yeah, but this migration would have taken me over 40 plus hours fighting context issues. So if you do the math, your time is totally worth it. Cursor is my IDE. 20 bucks a month. I don't have a lot to say here, but most of y'all probably already know about this. But the key thing for my stack is that it's actually model agnostic. I'm not locked into one provider and I can use Claude, GPT, or whatever works best for the task. And I can also run background agents while I'm also building something else. So that flexibility for me matters when you're using multiple tools together. Cursor is the hub and everything else plugs into it. So if you're not using Cursor yet, I don't know what to tell you. It's 20 bucks, just get it. 
Okay, so here's the thing about moving fast with AI. You can really move fast in the wrong direction. I've shipped bugs because I was in speedrun mode and nobody was checking the work. And that's where BugBot comes in. BugBot is a 40 bucks a month add-on for Cursor. And it's like having a paranoid co-founder who actually reads your code. So my workflow is like this. I use Droid to generate code fast. It gets features working and then I move quickly. Then I run BugBot between the PRs to catch the edge cases. Look at this. During the blob migration, I'm refactoring how the transcription hooks handle the job statuses. BugBot flagged a potential race condition in the reactive updates that I completely missed. And would it have broken production? I don't know, maybe. Probably so, actually. But I sleep better knowing that someone's actually checking my work. Is it annoying sometimes? Yeah. It'll flag style stuff that I don't really care about, but I'd rather have false positives than to ship a bug because I was rushing through 35 commits in about 11 days. And remember that quality problem I mentioned at the start? Context death, quality slip, deploy friction? This is how we solve the quality slip. Bugbot catches what I miss. So the last major tool is Vercel. I used to be on Cloudflare and it was fine. But here's what actually changed for me. Every branch gets its own deployment. Let me show you why this actually matters in real life. So I'm working on the blob migration, right? I'm basically deep in the refactor with the transcription hooks. Then a bug report comes in from a user. In the old world, I'd actually have to stop what I'm doing, context switch, fix the bug, tell Cloudflare to use this new branch, and I would basically lose momentum. But now with Vercel, I just fire off a cursor background agent. It creates a new branch, makes the fix, pushes it, and about 60 seconds later, that branch is now live, and I get a preview URL. During this migration, I had multiple branches going at once. The main feature branch, hotfixes, experiments, each one had a real URL where I can actually test and share. And when you're using AI agents to parallelize your work, you need an infrastructure that can actually keep up. Vercel just works, and it doesn't make me think about it. So that's the deploy friction problem that's currently solved. And that's just 20 bucks a month. And real quick on MCPs. These are smaller, but they save me a lot on tokens. Ref.tools is just nine bucks a month. It gets the documentation right the first time instead of me wasting tokens, having the AI guess at convex syntax or Next.js patterns. I even started adding agents MD files throughout my code base during this migration. And look, there's one in the app, there's one in components. There's also one in components UI. And these give the AI context about these design patterns and conventions that are specific to each directory. So Exacode is currently free. And that basically gives it fresh docs and real-time information. And these actually aren't the core of the stack, but they actually make everything else work better. And when AI has good documentation, it writes better code. It's as simple as that. All right, so let me break down the full stack and be completely honest about the cost. Factory AI is 200 bucks for 200 million tokens, then pay per use. Cursor, 20 bucks a month. Bugbot, 40 bucks a month. Vercel Pro, 20 bucks a month. Ref.tools, nine bucks a month. Exacode, free for now. So the total is about $289 per month, plus any additional token usage. That's not cheap. And you're absolutely right. But here's what I've learned. Free tools aren't free. Free tools that force you into workarounds, that eat your mental energy, that make you spend hours re-explaining your code base because the context died, those cost you way more than $289 a month. I'm not saying that all free tools are bad. I'm saying that for people shipping production software, the math hits different. So this stack actually costs money up front but saves your sanity and time is the one thing that you cannot buy back. Look, I wanna be straight with you. This stack is not for everyone. And if you're testing an MVP or validating an idea, just go use V0 or some other type of tool. They're great for that, but you may not need this. If you're cost sensitive and $289 a month actually matters to your runway, then this isn't the right time. Get to revenue first. But if you're a CTO, a technical founder, shipping production software, maybe a senior engineer whose time is actually worth hundreds per hour, or someone tired of the free tool workarounds eating your time, this stack solves the three problems that actually kill your momentum. So for context death, Factory AI handles that. For quality slip, 
Bugbot catches that. And for the deploy friction, Vercel removes that. You're not fighting tools, you're actually building. So that's the 2026 Vibe code stack. Factory AI, Cursor, Bugbot, Vercel, and a couple MCPs. That's five tools, which is about 300 bucks a month. It solves the context, quality, and deploy problems. And if you're serious about shipping quality software fast, invest in quality tools. Stop burning mental energy on workarounds. I'm so tired of it. And if you wanna see me actually build something with this stack live or have questions about any tools, drop them in the comments. I actually read them. Thanks for watching.